Hey guys, it's Kevin in my review for the Equalizer 2. And what the plot of the Equalizer 2 is essentially about is basically we are back with Robert McCall. He is now a Lyft driver that is also trying to help out people and, you know, he's doing his regular thing. But tragedy strikes when suddenly one of his friends is killed and basically he has to try to track down uh, the killer and set things right and figure out, you know, what could have happened and that's really all I'm going to say. So the Equalizer 2 in general, I really did not have too many expectations for this movie. Um, of course, you know, I just recently saw the first one. And, uh, you know, this one looked fun, but I just didn't really see the need for it. I felt like the Equalizer was a really good standalone action thriller that never took itself too seriously. But at the same time... Um, knew when to take itself seriously and was a very good Denzel Washington performance, but it wasn't a film that screamed franchise for me. So, like I said, I was very on the fence about this, and it looks like that was a, the right reaction to have, because this film is very, very unnecessary. Equalizer 2 is a very mediocre sequel that I really don't see the point of, to be honest, but let's just get into it starting off with the cast. And just like the first one, that is definitely one of the highlights here. I think everyone really does do a very good job. And especially that is to be said for Denzel Washington, who is just so great in this role. He's so charismatic. He's very rootable. And in this one, he's in a much better place than he ever was. He seems to be a lot more, you know, sure, he was a nice guy in the first one. But this one, he's even more of a free spirit. You know, he's going around. He's helping people out. And uh, I thought he definitely did do a very good job there. And you can tell that he definitely is doing a lot, you know, he is doing a lot of great stuff in this role. It's just, unfortunately, McCall does not really have a lot to do. We'll get to that in uh, the screenplay and things like that, but I do think overall he did do a very good job here, just like the first one. I mean, he's Denzel Washington. Obviously, you expect him to do a very good job. You love watching this guy go around and help people out, but also kick ass from time to time, and I think overall he did a really good job here. Unfortunately, the rest of the cast here just did not stand out that much to me. Pedro Pascal, you know, he does the bare minimum of what he needs to do as uh, McCall's former CIA partner. You know, he was good in the film, definitely. Ashton Sanders, I actually really liked here, but it's more the character than the performance. You know, he's very good in the film, uh, but nothing really amazing. Then Melissa Leo, Bill Pullman, they do what they need to do overall. Um, they're about as good as they were in the first one, and that's really all I gotta say about the cast. You know, they do a good job. Um, I think that, you know, they act as best as they can. It's just, unfortunately, they're saddled with a very, very mediocre script. And with that being said, let's just get into uh, the directing and writing, which I will say, I, the directing here, this is definitely not Antoine Fugua's fault. He tries to do what he can with the first one. He retains that same sort of, you know, action thriller type tone, but he does go a little darker in this one. And I think it does make sense to do that because the first one was more of an origin story and this one's trying to dive a little bit deeper into some things. And I think his directing is good here. I would not say that his directing is the problem. It's not nearly as um, self-aware and things like that as the first one was, which the first one, you know, it knew when to take itself seriously and knew when not to. This one really tries to be a lot more serious, minus a few comedic lines here or there. Uh, this one definitely is a lot darker, and I do think Fugua did a good job with that. It's really the writing that is the biggest problem in this film, which again is very surprising because it's the same exact writer from the first movie, and the writing Writing in this film I thought was incredibly weak, which, you know, I said when the uh, trailer for the second one came out that I really wish they didn't spoil Melissa Leo's uh, death in the trailer, and more so than ever now, because other than that, it takes a long time for anything substantial to really happen in this film. I mean, a lot of this film is just him going around as a Lyft driver, and helping people out and, uh, you know, trying to get those five stars or whatever. I mean, it's, it's just not very exciting. There's not really a lot happening. And look, the first film was slow paced, but in a way where it made sense because he was in retirement and he was trying to settle down. It wasn't really until he saw what was going on with Moretz's character that he actually felt a need to help her. And that's when the film really picked up the pace. 
This one is very slow paced throughout, and you really do feel it. But again, that mainly is because of just how loose the writing really is here. And even when it comes to Melissa Leo's death, that actually is my biggest problem with this film, because... As good as Melissa Leo is in the movie, she was only in the first Equalizer for a sequence. Not even, like, a few scenes. It was literally just a sequence with her and Bill Pullman, and then it was gone. And this movie, they try to do a lot more with her. And you would think because she's going to die, maybe they try to develop her character a bit more. And they really don't. They give her just as much development as they did in the first movie. And... Unfortunately, the fact that she dies uh, just didn't really do much of anything for me. I really did not care that much about this character. So when they are investigating what happened to her, there's really nothing to latch on to except for the fact that they killed his friend and that this was someone that was very close to him. And I felt like they really could have done a lot more interesting stuff with that, and they really didn't. The film did not seem too concerned about really doing anything. And in fact, when Leo dies, I did not really feel like watching, you know, I, I did not really feel like McCall reacted in a normal way. Like, he was upset about it, but not in a way you think he would be. And that was something that honestly really did annoy me. I really wanted to see them delve deeper into who Melissa Leo's character really was and why he cared about her so much. Maybe, you know, give us that backstory that we really wanted. And again, they never really do that. They give us a few lines here and there, and then it's just dropped because, oh no, we got to focus on much more important things like him as a Lyft driver going to someone because their credit card was invalid and basically forcing them to give five stars that's literally a scene in this movie like this film it's very very slow and it, it takes like i said a long time for anything to happen and when it does happen you would think that maybe they try to focus more on character and they really don't however i will say this there is one storyline in this film that I actually really did like. I actually really like the story between him and Ashton Sanders because for me, it's the only thing in this movie that actually does somewhat top the the first one because if you remember in the first one, he had this relationship with Chloe Grace Moretz and then she just disappeared throughout the rest of the movie and we barely saw anything with that. Here, Sanders is throughout the film, and their relationship is actually most prominent, and I really did like his character. He's someone who, he's like, that. he's, you know, in a gang, and he doesn't really want to be there, and he has this passion for art that he really wants to pursue, and I thought their relationship was honestly quite endearing. I really did like getting into it. Unfortunately, it's very underwritten, and we don't really get enough of it. We do see their relationship throughout the film, but I just felt they could have done a lot more with it. And again, the fact that the movie really doubles down on the action and the story, I really thought they were going to give more to character development, and they really don't here. And that's really what annoyed me about this film. Also, the villain in this movie is so predictable. I mean, literally the second that this character comes on screen, I'm like, he's going to be the villain, right? And yeah, that's exactly what ended up happening. He was, in fact, the villain. I'm not going to say who the villain is, but literally look at the cast list. Look who is in the cast list. You will know who the villain is. It is so predictable, and it's supposed to be, like, this big reveal when it happens. And I'm like, no shit he was the villain. Like, it just felt so incredibly obvious. And the fact that this film tries to pay, you know, tries to make it seem like a big deal, I thought was honestly kind of laughable. Because it was so obvious uh, who the villain really was here. And what ends up going down after the villain? Villain reveal, it should feel like this big deal because we're getting more into McCall's past. But honestly, getting into his past, like I didn't like the first movie, of course, they tried they made him more of a blank slate, and this one does dive a little bit deeper. What we find out honestly makes him a little bit more bland and you don't really care as much about the character now that the rug has kind of been pulled out because still, they're not telling us enough. They're telling us little details here and there, and we're just not getting enough of the story. We're getting little pieces of the puzzle, but we want the essential puzzle. Like, we have the origin story. Let's dive deeper into his character. Who is Robert McCall? We still don't really know. We still don't really know what he's done. We know a few key details here and there, and I really felt this film would dive deeper into 
into that, and unfortunately, like I said, they really didn't. And a lot of the characters in this movie are very much sidelined. Bill Pullman especially is wasted, which makes no sense to me. I mean, especially because his wife is killed. He should be one of the most prominent characters in the movie, and they just waste him completely. There's one scene where he is... Um, dispatched by this group and you think maybe he's gonna get killed or something but nothing like that ends up happening he's just gone and i didn't understand what the hell happened to him like he just disappears in this movie never comes back never is brought up again it was just very odd overall i don't know what ended up happening there uh but like i said the writing here is just very clunky there really isn't much to latch onto here unfortunately the cinematography is really good i will say that there are some really good shots there's one montage in the beginning with him and these lift drivers and i actually did really enjoy it i thought it uh, i definitely you know enjoyed what they end up doing with it and the the opening scene of this movie which you've seen a a lot of times in the trailer it is the one where he is you know um he he is in fact undercover as like an amish dude and it is actually a very intense scene i think the cinematography was very well shot there and the action scenes as well while there are definitely few and far between uh compared to the first one are still really great especially one towards the end of this movie i'm not going to spoil it but it involves this natural disaster and i really haven't seen an action film do something quite like this scale before and I thought it was actually really cool what they ended up doing with it. It's really just because of the writing that I just did not feel the full effect that the movie wanted. Like, it's clear that they were trying to top the first one with this climax, and unfortunately, because I didn't really care about the story, it was very hard for me to fully get into it, and... That's really my biggest problem with this movie overall. The score is fine. The editing, like I said, this film is way too long. Honestly, this movie could have been like 90 minutes and... I would have been fine with that because there really is not too much going on in the story. It's so basic. They act like it's this huge thing, and it's really not. Like I said, the biggest problem is that the characters we're focusing on, we just simply did not get enough time with. So when you're, you know, trying to look back on Melissa Leo's character, we just don't really feel much because they didn't really give us much to latch on to in the first place. And that is ultimately the fatal flaw with this entire film. There are so many things here that they're trying trying to do. They're trying to deepen the McCall character a little bit. They're trying to get us more into Melissa Leo's character. They're trying to double down on the action sequences and make this more of a suspenseful thriller, but the problem is we don't care enough about these characters and what's going on with them to fully get invested in the story, and in the end, it just becomes a very pointless film. i at the end of the day, I really don't see what the point of this movie was. Besides Melissa Leo being killed, everything else in the film feels largely inconsequential. And I really don't see what the point of anything in this movie really was, unfortunately. There are some things I enjoyed here and there. Denzel is a very charming dude, of course. The acting is still very good. There's some good action sequences here and there. But other than that, this film leaves very little to be desired. And I am going to give The Equalizer 2 overall a C. But overall, guys, in my review of The Equalizer 2, the most guys thought from overall, left your thoughts in it. This is one sequel of many this week. This is like the week of sequels. I don't know how this exactly happened, but let me know what you guys thought from overall, left your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.